Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and this is Let's Make Art and we let our new project together every week. And we are continuing our February month box which is called Love Notes and we're going to be addressing envelopes. So I'm going to show you two different very simple ways to jazz up your envelopes and make them a little bit more unique and fun. So the three steps that we're going to go through are I'm going to show you how to set up your envelopes. So I'm going to show you a simple way to mix it up a little bit. The second Thing, the second step is I'm going to show you how you can do two different ones. I'm going to show you how to do a banner one and then show you how you can introduce or include watercolors as well on your envelopes. And then the third step is I'm going to show you how to do the lettering. So you'll notice on here that they look a little bit different, not only in color, but this one is done with photography and then this one is done with brush lettering. So I'm going to walk you guys through that. So those are the three steps. The supplies that we have are envelopes. So if you have our box, they come, where's the box? We have these watercolor cards that, or it comes in a box that has cards and envelopes. And that's made by Strathmore. If you don't have that, you can use any envelope that you have. You don't have to use these specific ones. And then the pens I'm going to use. The first one is a brush pen. It's the Le Pen Flex pen. And it's a smaller tip do it like this so you can see. It's a smaller tip one, so it's a really great one. And then I'm going to be using the, this is a Le Pen as well, but it's a regular tip. So you'll notice even just looking at that, that they have two different tips. So I'm going to show you how to do both of those. And then for my watercolors, this swoosh, I'm going to call it a swoosh. I like swoosh. <laughs> is I mix two different colors. So I'll show you how you have fuchsia, and you have space blue. And I'll show you how we can make a purpley color. And that's it for this one. Those are all the supplies you need. So to get started, I want to show you how you can lay out your envelope. So I drew this really quickly to show what a typical envelope, the layout of it is you have your name, you have the street address, you have the city, the state, and then the zip code. So you typically will see it where there's three lines. I realize that if you are an international um, listener viewer, which there are a lot of you guys, which is so cool, and we're, we always love hearing where you guys are from around the world, yours is going to be a little different. So I would probably Google it, or you probably know it, uh, the, the way that you can do it, but know that it's a little bit different than this specifically. Just I didn't say that before. So, okay, I'm going to lay it out. Let me make sure I'm in a good spot for you guys to see. Is that cool? A little down. Perfect. Okay. I really, yeah, I need to, I want to show all of them at the same time. Okay, so we're going to start with the, which one did I write down? The banner one. Where's my, okay, well, so all you need is a ruler or something. I'm just going to use another envelope that I have, and I just need an edge so that I can draw my layout. So whichever one you would like to do, I'm going to draw the same layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an angled line. So you can see on both of these, this is an angled line. And I'm going to take this. So if you're looking at this, I'm not in the center of the envelope. I'm just a little bit higher than it. Is this okay? Yes. Spot. Okay. It looks great. So I'm drawing a line. And then, now that I look at this though, actually, so this, if you can see this, if this feels, if you want this line to be your bottom line, and let's pretend you're going to draw the top of your banner there, that might get a little bit high. So this is why I love using a pencil, and I'm just going to move that down just a little bit, because I realize that was a little bit too high. So I'm going to move it down just a little bit, because I'm drawing the bottom of my banner here. Okay, so then for this one, I decided to have the name on two different lines and also angled so I can show you just this layout. So I'm going to do the same thing as I'm going to draw two lines, I'm going to draw them parallel. And so the amount of space that you give yourself in between lines will dictate how big your lettering is. So if you want your letters to be smaller, you can leave a smaller amount of space. If you want your lettering to be bigger, I would leave more space. Okay, so that's the angled line. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw the horizontal lines that are all parallel to the bottom of your envelope. 
So you'll notice on here that I took this in two different ways. This one, I have the name, the address, the city and state and zip code. So I have four different lines, where in this one, I only have two. So you could mix and match. You can do whatever you would like, but I want to show you how I did this one. So I'm going to take four lines. So I'm going to go for it once. And if it's the same thing as I did with the banner, if I find that the spacing is a little off, I can just erase it. No harm in that. So I'm going to draw four lines. My one tip as far as when you're looking at the envelope, what you need to be aware of is the two things. Is I would leave probably about an inch or so from the bottom because when things go through the machine at US or I guess in the United States, but I'm assuming elsewhere, is that I've seen barcodes that go on the, on the bottom. So you want to try and avoid your lettering getting hidden from that. And then if you want, you can draw yourself a little square so you know that my postage is going to go there. So I need to be aware of that. One other thing I want to say before I forget is that I actually personally don't draw the return address on the front. Do you do that, Keenan? I was actually going to prime that as a question. Yeah, you're thinking yeah, that? Yeah, I was going to think that because <laughs> I sent a letter recently to my brother and Good I job. put my address as brother number five <laughs> on the top left corner. Yeah. But like you just said, please continue. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's what we were typically learned when we might have learned in school how to do that. And that's, there's a couple different ways. So you can either do that or what I actually do is I write my address on the back. So as long as just know that if you do it the way Keenan does, don't make it so big because you don't want the post office to get confused by that. Um, but yeah, for looks wise, I tend to do it with the, the um, sender's or the receiver's address on here and my address, the sender on the back. So then it's cleaner. Okay, so that, and then for this one, I'm gonna do the other one, but I'm just gonna have two addresses, or two lines. Boom, okay. Are those dark enough? They look good. Okay. So, now I'm going to show you how to, let's start with this one how you can add a banner to your addressing so that it kind of jazzes it up. So there is a practice worksheet that I made. It's actually more of a guideline, but this you can get if you don't have our box, you can go to our website at letsmakeart.com and find this project and download it. So there's a couple different ways that you can draw banners. I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna show you the steps to do it on this envelope. So if you leave that right there. You want me to leave it? Yep, perfect. Okay. Because they can see it on the top, they can see it on the side. Boom. Okay. So the reason why, let me explain first. The reason why when you're looking at this that I wanted to show you this is if you're here to learn lettering and you're not used to lettering, this is a great one to practice because you can jazz it up, like I said, with a banner and then we can just use our block font that we'll do here. So don't worry if you don't think your lettering is that good. This is a way that you can make your envelopes fun. So the first step to doing a banner, so I'm gonna draw two parallel lines. So I'm using this first line that I did as my guideline. I'm gonna draw a parallel line and kind of curve it a little bit. And then I'm gonna draw the top of it and have it go right there. So if you're wondering how far, how long do I make your, make your banner? That is all up to you. This is your envelope and you can decide how big you wanna do it. Because I have this entire phrase, that's why I needed to give it a little bit more room than just a short one like that. So that's the first step. The second step is I'm gonna cap this off, so I'm gonna close the banner. And then I'm gonna add basically a backwards S type of shape to this part, because if we're looking at this, I need to draw the other part of the banner. That's in the shot, right? Yes, it is. Okay, cool. So that, and then I need to draw, so when we're looking at this, like I said, this is gonna be, it's still part of this banner. So I need to make this, this about the same size and kind of eyeball. So I'm gonna visualize this space, I'm gonna visualize the same right here. So let's just say about there. It's not the exact same, it's totally okay. But I need to draw the bottom, and then I'm gonna cap that off as well and make it a ribbon shape. 
and then when you're looking at this, there's it's kind of open right here. So if we just draw a vertical line and cop it off like that, that will close it up. And then when I go to my final step, I'm going to color in this part, which is the back of the banner. So that is ready. I'm going to hop on over to this one and set myself up as well for this step. And then we'll go back to this one. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so transitioning into this guy. So when I'm looking at this, I didn't draw a banner for this one, but I want to show if you don't want to do a banner, you can use your watercolors and I'm drawing the swooshes here. So I have my two parallel lines here and I'm going to trust myself and I think that I'm going to erase these or just make them a little bit lighter because the beauty of watercolors is that they're transparent. So you see my pencil lines and I'm just gonna erase them. Even if you have a little bit of a faint line, that might help you out, go ahead and do that. So the two colors we had were fuchsia and space blue. So to make purple, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix some fuchsia and I'm gonna mix some space blue. So what I did is I had just a cup of water, just get a little bit damp and then mix it on in. So the cool thing is that if you guys can see, this is more of a, a pinkish purple, whereas if I add more blue, I'm gonna make it more of a blue purple. So you can decide what color you'd like. So I'm gonna do is, I oh, sorry, I didn't say this earlier, is I'm using a round 10. If you have a round six that Sarah uses from watercolor, you can also use that as well. So I'm going to, I like to, to spin in the color. Is that in the shot? It kind of is. Okay, I can move over. It's on the, it's on the top, but not the side. You can move over quite a bit. You got a lot of space on the top. Oh, cool, okay. Yeah. That good? Yeah, that's good. Okay, so what I do is I, instead of just dipping the tip in, because we're gonna be doing this entire swoosh, I want, I'm gonna use the belly part of this, so I want to actually get the entire bristles wet. And so now I'm ready. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold it more from the bottom actually. So I'm coming, attacking this swoosh from the bottom and I'm gonna push and draw across. If it gets a little bit light, just go and pick up more. If it has a little bit of color or if it's a little bit open, that's totally okay. That's all we're doing. I wouldn't do, I probably say the most maybe two or three if needed layers because you'll notice that this envelope if you have the same as us the cards are watercolors but the actual envelope is not watercolor paper so just be mindful of that just can't take as much as our watercolor paper is used to so i'm gonna do that one more time and so i'm gonna push again and then go And so the reason why I'm doing that hold is that if I were to use the tip of this brush and still push, I just can't get as thick of a line. Whereas if I hold it like this and I'm purposely pushing further to get the belly of this brush, I can use the entire strength of that. So that's just one tip for you. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry, clean off my brush. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our lettering. So let me get the right one. The other practice worksheets that I made for you guys is that there are two different ones. So you'll notice, I'll just show both of them, is they look really similar. So I wrote out the word kindly deliver, but you'll notice that this says folligraphy with a regular pen and this one says folligraphy with a brush pen. Yeah. So I wanted to give you guys both so that you can take time to practice this. So what you'll notice is that I'm going to walk through this one first. So this is doing folligraphy with a regular pen. Folligraphy, if you've never heard that term before, feel free to go back. We have a beginner lettering series where you can watch that as well just to get a little bit more in depth. But I'm going to show you how to do it here as well. So this is great. I'm going to be using my Le Pen, the regular tip, not the brush tip. If you have Crayola Super Tips, this is also a technique that you could use as well. 
or if you just have a good old ballpoint pen in your purse, they, this totally works as well for that. So don't feel like you have to have special fancy pens. But what I'm gonna do first is just like on this, what's, is it better for me to have it on the left or the right? If you actually have the card right there and then either one of those can be on either side. It doesn't matter? Yeah, you're good. Okay. I should have just said it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> So this, the first step of this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to draw out kindly deliver to in this space, but I'm going to draw it just with um, regular pressure. So I'm not going to think about it. I am go but before that, I forgot to say is I'm going to draw this first in pencil so that I can figure it out. If you wrote this and you realize, oh, I forgot two didn't fit in, just erase it and then fix it. But this is, I like to do it in pencil first so that I can know my spacing. So now I'm gonna do is I'm going to trace. So like I said, I'm not applying different amount of pressure. If you don't wanna do your script lettering, you can do your more block style, which I'll do for the actual name. But I'm going to draw that and then, so you guys don't get double blurry vision, I'm going to erase my pencil lines. And the cool thing that I learned about these pens is that they're not only great because they're smaller, so this is why I included this in this box for you guys because we're doing writing smaller, but they don't smear. So. This is a great pen, especially if you're a lefty and you feel like you smear a lot. Because um, I know we have some lefties in our group. Maybe this is a pen that you try out first. So, okay, going back to my photography. So this is step one. The second step that I'm gonna do is when you're looking at this, can you guys see how this kindly, yeah. This kindly deliver to has both thick and thin lines but I did this all with this same pen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and mimic and make this look exactly like that. So am I in an okay spot? Yep. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make those thick down spots thicker afterwards. So the, the saying to say to yourself is thick on the down, so when, I'm, when my hand is going down, it's a thicker line, thin on the up. Thick on the down, thin on the up thick on the down. So we're mimicking brush lettering, which I'll go over in a second, but that's what we're mimicking. And this is a great tool or a technique to use, especially if you're beginning and you want to make your lettering have that same style, but just the brush pen isn't working for you quite at the moment. This is a great one and it's not wrong. It's not cheating. I think it's the smart way. <laughs> so I'm taking and I'm overlapping those thick spots. So again, thin on the up, thick on the down. I just, I like to draw a line like that and connect it and then I color it in. Or sometimes if it's too small of a space, let's say for this one, you just kind of overlap over that line a couple times to make it darker. And if you ever have a point right here that you can see it's kind of a, I can tell where I have my thick and my thin line, just overlap back over and smooth it out. No need to worry. going okay there we go so that's that step I wonder if technically I realize on this one I added a semicolon and this one I didn't wonder what's right I don't know the answer <laughs> who knows <laughs> either way works in our book <laughs> they both look great okay semicolon or not so now I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the who I'm sending this to. I'm sending this to Heidi, who is on our marketing team. And I am going to do this. I wanted to show you how you can do this and do use folligraphy. So folligraphy is a technique. And I'm going to use that same technique on my regular block lettering. So I'm going to write out her name. If you want to do this first in pencil, you totally can do that. But I'm just going to go for it. So the same thing is I am simply 
just writing her name out. And then now that I'm talking and I'm looking at this, I actually made, you guys can call me out on this because on this one actually there's no thin or thick line difference. If you can see that, Keenan, I can. It's actually more of a bubble or block style of lettering. So if you want to do that as well, hold that thought. I'll show you. I'm going to continue with photography. I don't want to jump around too much for you guys, but I'm going to show you how you can do photography with the rest of the addressing, and then I'll show you to do the block. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to change it up, and I'll explain in a second. I was just thinking how cool it would be to... If you want to get your kids interested in this, if they're like 12, be like, hey, you want to write Santa Claus a letter, let's do it fancy. Then you'll make the good list. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to do that? I can't say yes. <laughs> in the future. Um, yes, this is a very fun way to get kids involved as well. But what I was going to say is that when you are addressing, you have the option to figure out your layout from here. So you'll notice that, oops, I forgot. So on this one, I actually didn't follow and have all of my, my words start at a certain point. So I, I think I might've just free handed it and decided I wanna move it over a little bit for spacing wise. So that works, or this one is left justified, which means that everything starts on the left side. It kind of ended up being more of a square on accident and just happened to work out spacing wise. I didn't do it on purpose. But so that's a way that if you freak out and you're like, I can't center, that's just not my thing, it's okay. Use this trick of just left justifying it and it'll it'll look like you did things on purpose. The the other thing they wanted to call out is that I like to spread out my zip codes. Is that right or wrong? Who knows? I just like to make things a little bit different because you'll notice when, like on this one, well this has the address or the the city and the state and the zip code on one line. Yeah. Thank you. But sometimes I mix it up. So this is the part that you could have fun with this. So instead of feeling stressed that you don't know which one way to do with it, I want to show you that there's no right or wrong way in that essence. And I swear I have sent um, a bunch of letters that have this address so it's not like it's wrong or no one's told me it's wrong. So keep going with the photography. So I'm going to take and I'm going to do these three and I'm going to use the same technique even though it's still my just my regular block lettering, not my script. I can use the same technique of Thin on the up, thick on the down. So thick on the down, so I'm gonna make this thicker. Thick on the down, thin on the up, so I'm gonna leave that. So that way, you can make your lettering kind of pop a little bit more than if you were to just write it out. We'll zoom on in a second and I'll finish that up. So then if you want to do a similar thing and have her name or have the name pop out a little bit more so that has them more emphasis, what you can do is you can make all of your lines just thicker and then color it in. So you're basically thickening up all of these strokes or you can still do the same photography technique and decide to have some thick and some thin. Totally up to you. So you can see I'm not taking and making it perfect, I'm just kind of making it thicker. So then the last thing that I did with this was you'll notice on here that there are thin lines. And so the reason why I did that is that's called a shadow. So that kind of adds some more emphasis to her name. So what I decided is that all of my shadow, so the technique with adding a shadow is you decide where your light source is. So I'm deciding my light source is up here. It's hitting this H and then casting a shadow on the left. So then on the left of all my strokes, I'm gonna draw a line. And the reason why I'm doing one at the bottom is I 
think when I had done this, I had moved my shadow not from here. I moved it up a little bit here, or my sun. So it hit here. So it kind of cast a little shadow on the bottom of that. So that's why I did that. We're, I'm gonna, we're gonna zoom and I'm gonna finish this up so you can see what this final one will look like and then we'll move to the next one. Go. Okay, so I finished all of that and I wanted to point out that if you can see, also this one looks a lot darker and thicker than this one. And I realized when I was doing this is that I also went over the thin parts of my lines. So it just looks a little bit, a bit thicker. Just a different way of doing it. I just wanted to call that out, that there's a difference. Okay, that's that one. Now we're gonna finish up this guy. Am I in a okay spot? Oh wait, switch up. Take out. There you go. Okay. So looking at this one, what I'm going to do is I'm using my brush pen. So this is the Le Pen Flex that I was talking about in the beginning. And the reason why it's a flex, it's just the brand, it's not a type of pen, I believe. Yes, that's their brand. It's a type of brush pen. So what that means is that I can apply thin pressure and I can apply thick pressure. So you can see I was doing it earlier to practice. But you can apply and create the thin and thick variants that you see on this and we're using it just with one pen. I guess I should rephrase that because we did this one all with one pen. But we're going to do this all in one stroke. Ah. That's what I meant to say. Uh, that's so much more clear. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is, if you like, you can do it in pencil first if you want to draw out the name, if that makes you feel more comfortable. I'm going to show you and I'm going to just go for it. If you want to pause though, this practice sheet is for you. I know it says kindly deliver to you. You can either practice writing that out if you want to get good with that, or you can write out the different names. But you'll notice on this practice sheet that I created is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go from... Um, why did I do? I'm trying to rethink now why I did. Oh, I just wanted to show you that you can start with this and you can see I drew arrows on this guideline just to walk you through it. As I drew arrows, you might not be able to see it, but that dictates where the thick strokes will be. So when I'm doing this is I'm going to talk to myself and I'm going to say... Before you start, yes. can you touch on that one more time and pull that paper, just put it over those envelopes. There you go. Can you see those arrows? Yes, we can. Oh, you can? Okay. Yeah. Maybe it'll help if I go you through can it then. Pull it down a little bit, then you can, there you go. Okay. So there's an arrow here. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that I'm, because there an, there's an arrow, I know that needs to be a thicker line. Whereas when I don't see an arrow, those are thin, and then there's an, oh, the, there, there is an arrow right there, which means I need to make that a thicker line. So again, arrow, thick, thin, arrow, thick. So the arrows note when to push harder. So that's what that's for. Thank you for telling me to put that in a good spot. Okay, so now am I in an okay spot to start writing this whole thing? Ready to go. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to talk to myself, like I said, and I'm going to go, Thin on the up, thick on the down. Thin on the up, more pressure, thick on the down. So I wanted to make this a little bit abstract and I had it going a little bit over my swooshes. So if you'd like and you'd rather have it be smaller lettering and have it fit exactly inside there, you can totally do that as well. So thin on the up, thick on the down. So my tip for you guys here is to feel free to go slow. Don't feel like you have to rush this like you might be used to with cursive. Feel free to take it stroke by stroke. So 
so thick on the down, thin on the up, thick on the down, thin on the up. And the reason why is that it's helpful with your hand to be able to decide how much pressure, because if I were to go, for example, and write Mr. and Mrs., and write it really fast, I would just have it be all the same thickness, so I'm not really thinking about it. So because this is what I'm going for, is I need to go slower and take it stroke by stroke. So if you can see, when I'm pushing down, this brush pen is getting smushed, basically. And then when I'm going thin on the up, I'm just grazing the top of it. So thick on the down, thin on the up. We also have a beginner lettering series that goes over the thin and thick lines if you would like a little bit more practice with that. Okay, so now for her address, it's interesting now looking at this is on my lines, it did get a little bit close. I think I'll be okay if I start maybe about here with her address, with her address and it starts about there. So I think I'm going to make myself a little note to help me. So you can do that as well. But for this one, what I wanted to show is two different ways. You can apply, apply the thin and thick pressure to your block letters as well. So I'm going to show that first. So thick, so thick on the down, thick on the down, thin on the up. So then you get that thin and thick variance. If this happens to you and you run out of room, I could write street, I can also abbreviate it. That way it still works and it won't go off the edge. Okay, so this was applying the thin and thick pressure. Now what I wanna show you is that you also can completely ignore what I'm saying and it will still work. So I'm just writing it a little bit quicker and I'm not having the thin and thick variance and it, that 100% still works, so you can do that. I'm pausing myself because I can fit this address right here, but I think I'm just gonna create another line just to show that you can do things a little bit different. And I'm just gonna draw the address on the bottom. So I'm gonna erase this again. I well, this is your test. I'm a little bit nervous to erase because this pen is more juicy. Don't know if that's the right word to use. Juicy is the right word. <laughs> oh, we're okay. Okay, so wow. The pens pass a test of smudging. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, final thing I want to talk about with this is you guys can see that there's more spacing in between these lines. Neither is right or wrong, they're just different. So however your envelope turns out is great. I think before I finish this up, there's one more thing I forgot I made for you guys. Is <laughs> I won't go over this in depth, but this is another practice worksheet if you want to get good at your photography like we did on this one and you're curious and wondering which side should be the thin and the thick, I created this for you that you can also download and you can see there's dotted lines that notes and you can go over and practice with your regular pen. So you can draw it first and then when you see a dotted line, that's where you'll thicken that up. So this is just another handout for you guys to practice that I created for you guys that you can go over. Okay, so we are done though. Um, I hope you guys had fun. Please remember that be kind to yourself in these situations. It's really easy to get frustrated and think, I don't, that wasn't very good. I'm not even gonna send that. They're not gonna like that. Please, I'm, I'm gonna be here to push you to mail that envelope. You will, you will be surprised at how it will be well received just because you took the time to hand make it and think of someone else in your life. So with that said, we also have a Facebook group called Let's Make Art Lettering that you can come in and join. We'd love to have you along. We have an Instagram called Let's Go Make Art as well, so you can tag us in that. And enjoy mailing out some love notes. Thanks, guys.